Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Janet and if you're new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content and don't forget to hit that notification bell so YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. And if you're one of my returning subscribers, welcome back to my channel. I have another protein sparing modified fast bread recipe to share with you today. I'm super excited to actually try this out. I This is my first time making it. A lot of the recipes I will do like a trial and error before I share them on uh, YouTube. But today I'm just diving in, jumping in with both feet and we are going to give this a try. I'm not a huge tomato fan, but and neither is Jimmy, but for some reason, bruschetta is always like one of our favorite things to get as an appetizer when we go out for a meal. It's just something I think about the flavoring that just makes it taste so good. So that is what I'm going to be making today. I am going to be making some bruschetta uh, that is definitely gonna be probably on days on your keto days. Definitely have the macros at the end of the recipe and share with you what I will have for macros per serving for mine. Everybody's gonna be a little bit different probably with what items you're using, what brands you're using, but I feel like this is probably more useful on one of your keto days, but Hey, it's definitely cuts down on your carbs and the one thing that I've been loving about the protein sparing modified fast bread is I don't get an upset stomach with my IBS. I don't get any water weight gain. I feel absolutely amazing when I'm having this bread. So that is one thing. I will implement it even on my keto days. You guys know that. I have it almost every day. So let's get started on our bruschetta. All right, first thing is first, we are going to whip up all of our ingredients. I think actually what I'm going to do though first before I start whipping my eggs is because sometimes I notice when I make them and then I carry on to do something else, it sometimes falls. Um, so I'm gonna actually make all the ingredients to go um, in with the in with my egg whites. So let's get started on that. What I always do is I just mix it in a bowl all together and then I slowly incorporate it once my egg whites are all, um, have some stiff peaks in them. All right, exciting news as well too. I finally got my hand on some allulose. So I'm going to try allulose in this recipe and I'm going to omit my swerve powdered sugar in this recipe. So. I'll be honest, I'm not exactly sure how much I'm supposed to use of this, but I think I'm gonna use like a little less than a quarter of a cup. I hope that's not too much, but that I'm, this is gonna kind of be trial and error. And hey, if it works, it works. And if it's a fail, you know what? I bet you it'll still taste good. <laughs> All right, so I have my oven preheating to 325 and I am just going to add in, oh, that kind of made a mess. I'm gonna add in my egg white powder. I use a quarter of a cup of the egg white powder and that seems to make an absolutely huge difference on my bread. My bread never is dry and especially when I freeze it and take it out of the freezer, it still tastes really, really fresh. So I don't have that problem of it going dry whatsoever. Then we are going to put some xanthan gum in there. And I will have all the measurements down in the description. I always link my, um, my recipe. And then we are going to add some nutritional yeast and also some active traditional yeast. And then I'm going to add my allulose. So like I said, I'm gonna use, a lot of people use a lot of this. I don't know why, like I see people, um, I see in other videos that use up to like a half a cup. That seems like a lot because I only use, with my powdered swerve, I literally only use, I wanna say it's like a couple of teaspoons. Um, I'm gonna do a little less than a half, a quarter of a cup. I'm gonna do about half, half of a quarter of a cup. That's gonna be what, I, what I'm gonna try today. See, we'll see how it works out. <laughs> all right, so all of that now is all mixed up. I just give it like a light mixture. I'm gonna add some salt as well too. I'm gonna to use the Redmond's Real Salt. So I'm gonna give that just a few shakes in there. So that is all ready to be poured in once my egg whites are all done. So let's get started now on the egg whites. I use a cup of egg whites. I always use the carton egg whites because we do have chickens that lay eggs and we like to kind of use those eggs for like eggs and bacon and other things when you can actually enjoy like the whole entire egg. Um, but 
definitely feel free. There's lots of people that have good luck using the fresh egg whites as well too, but this always works for me. And then we are going to use two teaspoons of the cream of tartar. All right, and I have a KitchenAid mixer. I have gotten a lot of questions about my mixer and Jimmy actually bought it for me. I think it was my birthday. And funny story, he actually ended up finding it at a pawn shop because these, as you guys know, are very, very expensive. He bought this for me, I wanna say it was probably like a good eight years ago. And it has been absolutely amazing. a mold so I am just going to use once again my um, cookie sheet with the parchment paper um, but for you guys who have a but for you that have a mold you can definitely use a mold I'm just gonna make kind of baguettes is what I'm going to be making um, depending on what size you want and what thickness I'm gonna see how much I can fit on my pan I am also going to put on some everything but the bagel seasoning because I have mentioned before I really like using the seasoning um, I feel like it just gives it so much flavor so I'm gonna try to put it like all over the whole entire baguette I know these don't look like baguettes but I kind of had to split it up just because I don't have a big enough pan to make the actual like baguettes so um, but it will still work right and I made them kind of nice like a decent size there we go, awesome. Also, I will also um, have this recipe linked in the description. I'll actually put the video. I had made a video on how I made this. Best thing ever, I will never go back to store-bought. So, all right, oven is set at 325. I am probably gonna put these in for about 15 or 20 minutes. All right, next we are going to get started on our bruschetta since we do have some time since that is in the oven. So I had gotten this pack of Roma tomatoes and I just got them at Costco. So I think I am going to use about eight of these and then I'll have two left over. Like I said, we are not huge tomato fans, but um, if they're available, I'll throw them like on a burger or something like that. I'm not like totally against tomatoes. Um, but like I said, something with bruschetta, Jimmy and I absolutely love bruschetta and that's always seen that we both agree on that we get as an appetizer to share when we go out like this is obviously prior to me going keto um, now we usually don't even order an appetizer anymore because we get full on our meals so I am just going to quickly wash these and then I'm just going to dice them all up All right, I ended up using six of those tomatoes actually because it looked like it was actually making quite a bit once I get all the other ingredients in there as well. I will have the recipe linked down below of the one that I'm resorting to that I kind of used as a guide. Um, then we are going to add some basil. Now, if you guys have fresh basil leaves, use that instead, obviously, but I just have um, basil seasoning that I am going to add. And then we are going to need a quarter of a cup of sliced Parmesan cheese. And some salt and pepper. Then we are going to need a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. So I get this specially made here in Medicine Hat. Um, it is called the Olive Tap and it is absolutely amazing here if you do live local. Um, so we, you get this fresh. So we are gonna use a tablespoon of that. Sorry, I don't have my fancy 
tablespoons right now. They are all dirty, <laughs> of course. And then I am also going to add some olive oil. This is garlic olive oil. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of that as well. Now this also calls for some garlic cloves, but I am just going to use some minced garlic since my olive oil already had some garlic in it. But I'm just gonna give it a little, little sprinkle of that as well too. All right, and then let's mix it all up. And then we are gonna give it a little taste test to see how it tastes. Now everybody's gonna be different. This is kind of the recipe that I found. Um, I wish I did have some fresh basil because I think that would make all the difference. All right, I am going to just put this, I'm gonna cover it with saran wrap and then put it in the fridge just to let all of the flavors kind of marinate together, but this tastes really, really good. I had also left the baguettes in the oven for 15 minutes. I now turned the oven off and left them in the oven and I'm gonna do that for about 10 minutes and then they should right, be done. So this is the bread. Um, I had taken it out because after about five minutes of the, in the oven, I noticed it getting like awfully dark brown, but then I took them out right away thinking that they were like getting overcooked, but it's probably the allulose, you guys. I'm not used to baking with allulose, but I am let them cool and what I'm gonna do with them anyways, because they did fall a little bit because I don't think I left them in there long enough, but I am going to slice it up and then I'm gonna put it back on this tray and then I'm gonna put them back in the oven just to toast for, we're gonna play it by ear, but I'm gonna say probably only like five or 10 minutes at 325. So I'm gonna slice these up put them all as many as I can fit on back on this pan and put it back in the oven because we want our baguettes or bigger baguettes <laughs> toasted, right? So let's do that. in for 10 minutes and I think 10 minutes is the perfect amount they're a little bit crispy on the outside if you want to leave it in longer if you really like your bruschetta to definitely have like that good crunch you can leave it in longer um, but for me uh, this is actually probably perfect for me I don't like mine like rock hard um, I like to save my my teeth but I'm just gonna let this completely cool and then we will give it a try all right, so my bread has completely cooled. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to scoop some of the bruschetta mixture onto each one. And then we will give it a taste. So I'm just going to keep my mixture in the bowl and cover it. And then I'm gonna put these the bread in a baggie and then just kind of assemble it as I want it um, just so that the bread or anything doesn't get mushy but this is our final plate so let's give it a taste all right let's give one of these a taste it looks delicious that is one thing that I have missed is some bruschetta so let's give it a taste test Really, really, really good. The bread actually turned out so good. So the bread turned out perfectly, but if you definitely want to leave it to, for it to get like a drier consistency or leave it in the oven for a little bit longer, then you could probably do it for 20 minutes instead of 10. But this is how I like mine. I don't like mine too, too crispy, but really, really good. All right, so I hope you give that bruschetta a try. It tastes absolutely amazing. I would recommend though, leaving it in the oven probably another five or 10 minutes to definitely get that crunch that goes with bruschetta, but the flavor and everything was very, very good. So if you're missing that, make sure that you give it a try. So don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so YouTube can let you know when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.